Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. My name is Mackie Hall, and you've seen sliced artwork all over the place. Company logos, game logos, and movie types, just to name a few. So we're going to take you through the steps on how to make sliced text. Piece of cake, really. All you need to know is the right text to use, an understanding of the expand tool, and then an understanding of the shape builder tool. With that, you got it. So let's take you through it. And by the way, this is a killer video. Subscribe to see more. All right, let's go. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, height of 1,000 points. It'll have a single artboard. And if we scroll down, because we're building this for screen, we'll have a color mode of RGB. Let's go ahead and create our document. All right, before we get started, let's go over a couple of things really, really quickly. First thing is we're using the Essentials Classic Workspace. Switch on over to the Essentials Classic Workspace. All you need to do is go to Switch Workspace and select Essentials Classic. Now you don't need to use Essentials Classic. I use it because it works best for me. That being said, if you want to use your own workspace, I will definitely point you to the right tools and windows. Next thing I want to mention is that we are using Smart Guides to activate Smart Guides. All you need to do is go on over to View, scroll down to Smart Guides, or select Control U. On that note, we're going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight hotkey recommendations, tips and tricks, and key command recommendations. Last thing I want to mention is that we're building this piece on a PC. That means if you're using an Apple device, anytime we recommend the control key, use the command key instead. Again, for Apple, command equals control. All right, let's get started building our piece. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the type tool and we'll click anywhere on our artboard. Once done, let's write the word sliced. That word can be in lowercase or initial cap, whichever way you want. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to select our entire word. We can double click on the word, hit control A, or of course drag across the word. Next thing we want to do is we want to increase the type size from 12 points or whatever you've got set to default to 200 points. And then let's go ahead and talk about our type. When you slice words, the best character to use for a sliced word is a tall and thick typeface. Now the typeface that we're going to be using right now is called Apex Regular. So I'm going to select that. Now if you want to use Apex Regular, it's available for free download in several different places. Here's where I got mine. I got mine from fontswan.com. Either visit the link below or just go to fontswan.com and do a search for Apex. All right, now that we've got our type in, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. And then let's align our typeface to the center of our page. I'm going to use my align tools at the top of my toolbar. If you don't see it there, all you need to do is go to Window, Align, or Shift F7. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Now that we're done with creating our word and aligning it to center, I don't need to edit the characters anymore. Instead, what I need to do is edit the shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is expand my letters into shapes. How do I do that? I'm going to go Object, Expand, and then when the Expand window opens, I'm going to make sure that Object and Fill are selected, and let's click OK. Notice straight away that our type has been converted into editable shapes. Let me show you when I go to Outlines. You can see it right there. Let's exit outlines. All right, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and draw a line through our shape. That's going to be our cut line or our slice line. All right, let's deselect our shape. Let's grab our pen tool. Once I've got the pen tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover around the bottom third of my type to the left. I'll click and release. And then I'll go hover over to the top right third of our type right there. I'll click and release again. Now, once I'm done with that, let me grab my selection tool. I'm going to deselect my shape. There we go. We're ready to slice. Now, how are we going to slice this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my type and my line, and then I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool to create unique shapes from the combination of my line and type. Check it out. First thing I'm going to do is drag across my entire word and line segment that I created. Once done with that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Shape Builder tool. Now the Shape Builder tool works by combining overlapping shapes into simpler ones. Check this out. When I hover over my S, notice that only the top part of the shape up until the line is selected. That's going to create a unique shape. So if I drag across all of the individual shapes, it's going to create unique shapes 
out of all of them up until the cut line. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to drag across all of my letter shapes just like that. Notice that I did not drag across the inside of the D. Reason is, is I don't want to create a unique shape for that. I just want to keep that void. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. I'm going to click and drag across all of my letters. Now what I did there was create, again, unique shapes from all of those shapes combined. All right, next I'm going to grab my selection tool. And I'm going to ungroup my shapes. What that's going to do is that's going to break all of the shapes into their new individual components. Check this out. With my shape selected, I'm going to go Object, Ungroup, or Shift Control G. Now I can also ungroup by right clicking on my shape and selecting Ungroup. Now that I've got that, check this out. I'm going to deselect my shape one more time. And notice that as I click across my shape, look at the individual shapes that have been created. All right, we've still got a little bit of work to do because we've still got our line segment in there, so we need to delete that. How do we do that? Well, let's go to Outlines, and then let's zoom in just a little bit. That's good right there. And then let's go ahead and click on the line segments and delete them. Note that I'm not clicking on any line segments inside the letters because those are delineating paths to each respective shape. All right, now that we're done with that, next thing we want to do because these are all individual shapes, is we want to group the shapes from each half of our sliced text. Check it out. Now with my selection tool still selected, I'm going to click and drag over the top half of my letters, just like that. Notice that they're all selected. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object, Group, or Control G, I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to do the same thing with the letter shapes on my bottom half. Again, I'm going to click and drag across, just like that. I'll go Object, Group or Control G. Again, what I could do is I could right click on the shapes that I've selected and select group from there. All right, let's escape outlines and let's deselect our shape. All right, now that we've got that done, we're ready to play. We've already completed our text slicing. All we need to do is color it out to show the difference. All right, let's click on the top half and then let's go ahead and double click on our fill. Let's change our fill to a yellow or gold. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's make a little bit more yellow. That looks good right there. I'll select that. Click OK. And then let's go ahead and select the bottom half of our shape. Now that we've done that, let's double click on our fill one more time. And then let's go to sort of an oceanic blue. That looks pretty good right there. We'll select that. Let's click OK. And then let's deselect our shape. Let's bring the entire artboard into view. Now that looks pretty good right there. And you've just taken your first steps into sliced text. Let's go ahead and add in some additional text so you can see a completed logo with sliced text. There you go. I think that looks pretty good. Now that we've completed our sliced text, we can either leave it like that and we've got an awesome sliced text logo, or what we can do is we can add just a little bit more drama. How do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to select the top half of our text logo. We're going to arrow up about five times. Let's go ahead and deselect by clicking anywhere on our artboard. Let's drag across all of our shapes just like that. Let's go Object, Group, deselect our shape. We've got a pretty cool logo. And with that, we are done. All right, now that you've got that down, try your own thing. With these tools and a little bit of rotation, you can jump into shattered and slash text as well. All right, now that we've covered that, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. I'd appreciate it just a little bit more if you subscribed. We'll see you next time. Peace.